The purpose of this application is to store and retrieve book records from a database. So far we have created the graphical user interface with the Kinter. So this is our script. So basically we have the front end of our program. And what we need to do now is attach some functions to all these buttons. The first step is to create a script that will proceed behind the application will database records and return all values to the interface. The second step is to attach all the functions to the interface buttons for make our interface fully working. For example, functions will be trigger that selects data from SQLite database and then gets those data and put them all this list box here. So that means that we need to create a database, SQLite database with SQLite 3. In this video, I will demonstrate the first step in our schedule. The first thing that we must do here is to create a table. We can import a script that create a table as external. Let's call the script as backend. So we need to create a backend.py. Let's switch the work to backend script. Let's say you create a view function that select data from database. Then go to view all button and add a common parameter here. The first thing that we must do is to import SQLite 3. Before create a view function, we have to create a database and connection to it. Let's call it function connect. Define a connection object con. Let's call a database books dot db. So we establish a connection to database like that. Then we define cursor object. Next, we need to execute an SQL statement. Inside double quotes, we input an SQL statement. So, we have a database and now we need to a table in that database. Here the logic is simple. Every time when this function is called, the script check if the table is exist. If not, then create a new one. Let's call table book. Now we have to pass some parameters. The first parameter is the ID. That will be an integer. We must set it as primary key. Title as text, author as text, year as integer, ESPN as integer as well. Next, we have to commit the changes and the close the connection. Let's continue by creating insert function. This function will insert some data into the database. I think you are expecting to pass all these parameters as title, ESBN, author, and so on. So let's do it. Okay, this part was simple. And commit change for add entry button and finally close the connection for this function. Before this, we must to execute our specific SQL statement inside quotes. Insert into book values and here's the tricky part now. Because ID parameters is auto incremented value, we don't have to pass that manually. Instead of this, we can pass null value. This will create ID automatically. Next. Put four question marks, one for each of our values. And then you have to pass all the parameters as a second parameter over the execute function as a tuple here. Let's move to the view function. This will fetch all the rows of the table. So 
we copy this and put them here so we connect to the database create a cursor object and then we execute an sql statement because this function we will not cause any change we remove comment method from here let's call an execute method as a select all from book so you actually need to return your selection as a table and to put the values to the list box so view function have return a table for this let's define rows of list box as row and use fetch all to grab all the values to the rows and returns rows here next we have search function which implement our search that means that user will enter a title or an author name or the year or ESBN number or he may choose to enter all of them at the same time if let's say user entered the author only he will get all rows corresponding to that author so here we need to pass four parameters like this of course we need the same lines of codes for temporary connect to the that database replace execute definition as select all from book where title something or author something or year something or ESBN something the second parameter will be the tuple of arguments then we need to fetch all the rows that will be returned from this query and store them in the in this rows variable close the connection and return rows let's imagine in the situation if users enter only years of the book then search function returns error because it's designed to work only in case if values of all parameters are entered in order to solve this problem we just put quotes after each parameter in the functions as default values let's go ahead with a delete function now probably delete function will want to select one of the records in the list box and press the delete button that means we need to grab the list selection at first we will grab that as a tuple and that tuple will have a unique identification number so we want to refer that ID and then go to our database table and delete the row with that ID so delete function is expected to get ID copy and paste lines for processing a database so we want to delete from book where ID is equal to something and then pass ID parameter do not forget a comma here the last function will be update regarding the user behavior update function expect to select a row from the kinter list box this function is necessary when user want to modify any row of item in our database again we will get a selection from the list box and then we would refer to the ID the first parameter is ID but let's imagine the situation when user want to change the title from the Sun to moon so get the title in parameter the same for author year and ESBN now we can update the row with that ID with the new values that user set First of all, we need to get all these files rows for, for prepare our database. So, update book and set keywords. Set title equal something, author equal something, year equal something, ESBN equal something, where ID equal any then pass the tuple here with id title author and esbn finally we have our backend script ready now it is the time to attach all these functions to our buttons 
I will do in the next video. Follow me to keep updated.